Cool. All right, friends, welcome to, um, I don't even know what meeting is it, 70, meeting 74 or how, however many meetings. I, was, I just said to Arnold, I've given you a good rest for two weeks, so nobody has an excuse not to pull out all the stops now for the rest of on your own personal family plan. And uh, because of uh, some requests that came back from the field, uh, what is this annual self-assessment and the 12-month action plan? And it is going to become more and more important in your lives going forward that if you want to really benefit from the gig program and the gig products, it will be uh, one of the preconditions to go forward on it. So uh, I thought, all right, uh, let me then just make a training on it tonight so that we can, for the sake of other people, also just record it and they can refer to it. And for people who then have to go through the template later on, they can refer back to the of tonight. So ASA, you will often in future hear us referring to an ASA. So ASA stands for Annual Self-Assessment. And the, re the result of that annual self-assessment will be an updated 12-month action plan. So to make sense of this whole thing, I've just structured it to say, all right, you have to understand where it fits in. And first of all, you have to understand the three generational journey and typical hindrances that stop people forward. Uh, then I'm going to give you the uh, structure of the annual self-assessment, the content and structure, and then just what we want to see as an end result in the 12-month action plan, uh, and then uh, the rewards of the plan. And then right at the end, there will be, I'll open up the screen, there will be time for questions and answers. So to understand uh, the whole purpose of the annual self-assessment, let us just for a minute stand still at the typical journey that every family has to go through from struggle to success to significance. And I've uh, given it uh, a structure to say on top is a green triangle and at the bottom a purple triangle and the top one represents uh, your family and personal journey and the bottom one that represents your business and community journey. When you're in struggle, you have no energy whatsoever for, for to, to focus on getting a business started or even becoming involved in the community. But as you then move forward and you get out of struggle into a positive cash flow and eventually into more than one sustainable income stream and eventually into significance, you'll see that as a family, you have less, you don't have to focus as hard on survival anymore and you have more and more time to become involved in more businesses and also to the benefit of community. And that is really the heart of the gig message. And you should see yourself in this journey somewhere on that journey. Now, who are the people that we currently have in gig and that we will have in future? It can be any person that is either an individual right now, you still don't have a family, but you plan to have a family one day. It could be an existing family, wherever you are, young family, mature family, or you could be a business owner because businesses go through a similar phase of struggle to significance. And what I'm working a lot on late is uh, with people uh, in uh, community groups, and we call that Anyone uh, who we call entity with the idea to start their own CFIs, but they need to have their own subcommon bond, uh, and then from there we can help them. So, in terms of this journey going forward with this context, what then is a hindrance? Why are people not moving? And Gig has now been going for uh, officially since 2008, but in terms of the bank, 2011. Uh, and some of you a couple of weeks ago listened to the testimony of Philip Chinji, but he's one of the many or one of the few of the many that saw the gig opportunity that actually took it and did something about it. Sadly, a lot of people start their journey and then somewhere along the line forgot why they started the journey. And then after a while, 
actually even bail out. So that's why we have to see what can we do to help people stay focused on their journey. And uh, the best illustration is if you look at uh, what uh, Stephen, uh, uh, is it Stephen, Stephen something, but in his book on uh, time management, he talks of the principle that if you uh, put time management into this kind of what is important versus what is urgent, you find that any activity that you're currently busy with uh, fits in with either an important is increasing there that side and urgent is increasing this side. But if it's in this block, it's not important, it's not urgent. So it's low importance, low urgency. If it's that side, it's important, but not urgent, and often it doesn't get done. And then this side, it's not important, but urgent, which tends to be almost most of the things that attack us on, uh, in our daily lives. And then there's a few things that are very important and very urgent. So he then says, how do you deal with this? He says, on the important but not urgent, decide when you will do it and do it. If it's not important and not urgent, do it later time. And if it's not important but urgent, don't do it. Delegate it to someone else so that you have time, do it now on things that are important and urgent. But yet, this is what we are focusing on tonight. The do it now or decide when you will do it is then our annual self-assessment and the 12 month action plan. So the 12 month um, or the, the annual self-assessment process is summarized in this diagram. When you do it, you'll be given a template and the template will take you through three stages. The first prompt would be around your family. The second prompt would be around uh, the wheel of life, the eight areas of life. And the third prompt would be in terms of gig itself and your journey on it. And then out of all these prompts is to see where are you now? Where should you be? And then identify the gaps and put it into a 12 month action plan that you will now work on from year on for the next 12 months. And then just to uh, keep accountability, submit it to your legacy coach uh, and to the Gig Institute. So we're just going to quickly unpack these prompts for the sake of the people who have not yet been exposed to it. And the first prompt is your family. Because you, the only reason why we do these things is not to please one another, but to really be serious about our family. And we say, you put yourself and your spouse in the middle. You look at then people who could be dependent on you and the obvious dependents would be kids. And we've just made space for four, but you can make as many spaces there as you want. And then on the wife's side, her family, on the husband's side, his family, if the parents are still alive. And in some instances, on the husband's side or on the wife's side, you might also have dependents that for whatever reason are financially dependent on you. So these are the people who on the one hand, they're part of your uh, emotional network, but they can also be draining if things go wrong in any of their lives. And then we prompt you through a series of questions to say, look at your current emotional structure add seven years to each one's life and then ask yourself what am i doing for each of these people so that seven seven years from now when we get there that is in place for them for argument's sake let's say one of your parents might have to be put up in an old age home let's say your children are starting to leave primary school and go to or leave high school and go to university, what are those consequences? And then for each of the people yourself included, you look at seven years from now, actions to be taken, things to be in place, put the name of the family member, put the actions. So it's just a prompt. Then you repeat the exercise. And now we add 21 years to today's age. And now if you're 50 today, 21 years from now, you'll be 71. And 
what must then be in place for you and your spouse 70, uh, 21 years later for the parents if they're still alive for the kids who might now have started their families and if you want to start a trust fund for the for the, the grandkids and things like that so it just prompts you to say all right 21 years later what actions need to take place what things have to be in place then the name of the family member and what actions are uh, involved there and that's the purpose of the first prompt it's just to bring your emotional future in focus because we tend not to think of these things and almost have an ostrich uh, approach of put my head in the sand and hope somehow things will just work out by chance the next prompt is called the wheel of life and the eight areas of life uh, and many authors in their books talk about it physical so you're not just one you're the sum of all of these uh, physical social your interaction with other people wealth and financial so provision your mental well-being uh, business career family relationship your spiritual well-being and then what do you do for restoration and fun so what we've done in the template is to assist you through a series of questions and in answering these questions and scoring yourself uh, it will help you to complete this wheel of life so i've just taken the first one physical and a typical questions that we ask there would be uh, and you score yourself out of 100 uh, so under i exercise regularly how often do you exercise do you think you can improve and score yourself so 100 is good one is bad so in this case we say hey you know i'm just sitting in my office and i'm not getting out and exercise and i keep lay laying it off i think i should go out and exercise more but right now it's a it's a 30 percent i eat healthy foods is the next one all right i do my best uh, give myself a 60 percent on that one i take nutritional supplements oh no i'm you know i believe my doctor that says i don't need to take any supplements i take get it all from my food all right well then give yourself a zero because you need to learn more on the nutritional supplements i work and live in a clean environment with little pollu pollution that's going to be difficult for all of us but let's just say a 50 percent there i don't smoke okay they i'm healthy i don't smoke so i give myself 100 percent i don't drink strong liquor okay i do drink an odd uh, glass of wine and a beer every now and then but generally i'm good i give myself 80 percent there i teach my children to have good physical habits well you know the reality is they sit in front of the tv all day and play games and uh, i know i need to do something on that one but give myself 50 percent there and then i make an effort to engage my family in sports activities so that we can do it together well not so not so good i normally do my things and they do their things then you add up the score so there was eight areas out of 100 so you add it up in this case it will add up to 400 then divide it by eight and that'll give you a score out of 100 so 50 or 50 percent then you plot on that bar and in the middle is zero at the circle would be 100 percent you now plot it and say all right my physical thing i'm roughly there at 50 percent now i've not given you the detail for the rest but in the template that you'll be provided you can then do the same for social and let's say it's slightly higher there i'm not so wealthy as i want to be financially under stress mentally i can do a lot more I'm, i've actually let that slip now business career i'm working long hours i'm really trying hard there in relationships uh, all right i'll say that's about 50. spiritual i'm not so good on that one uh, and yes you know if I, I just deserve to uh, relax a bit and play games and watch tv and whatever and then what you do once you've done this exercise and you've plotted it now you just connect the lines and that gives you uh, your current wheel of life and uh, the idea is imagine you have a car fitted with four wheels of this shape how comfort would the ride be for you uh, and how long will the car last because it will because before it will really shake and come apart 
And that's the purpose of this wheel of life. So what you then do in a case like that, you look at the areas that are very low financially. So like, what can I start doing in terms of investment? You're looking at the ones that you do too much of, and so you don't have to do more in that. But all the little ones, you try and get that area. So maybe spiritual, I need to get up early in the morning, do some private uh, quiet time for myself, maybe get some more exercise going. And that's what we mean by prompting you in terms of the wheel of life. Then there's a third prompt, and that is about your gig journey from struggle where I, my income is less my, than my expenses, stability to where I have more income than expenses, to success where I now have more than one, three income streams, and my significance is becoming involved in my community. Then we've developed a series of questions just to prompt you to say, how far are you from struggle to stability? We refer to it as the survival phase. From uh, stability to success, we refer to it as the giving your life structure, structure phase. And then from success to significance, that's now the support phase where you get your succession plans in place and the support phase in place. And out of the questions that you answer, you can then see what's still missing and make that part of your uh, action plan to now say, I'm going to uh, act on it and work on it. So then um, out of these three prompts, the result must be then be a 12 month action plan. And in the template we give you, we give you also the detail of how to go on Google Keep. Uh, and Google Keep is a, a good thing to do it. And this was done in Google Keep where you then put your 12-month uh, uh, action plan, put your name there, and you can even say for the period uh, May or June 21 till May 22. And then you put the month, I've just put month one, but in your case, you will then say put June and July and August. And then you pick two or three things that during the month of June you will do. So I've just said, okay, in the case of John Doe, he's going to do his will and testament and review that. He's going to review his risk pro portfolio and contact the gig wealth coach to say, just have a look at my thing. And I'm going to set up a meeting with my legacy coach to see a presentation on how can I create wealth seeds by saving on my household consumption. And then in month two, and it's not a crisis. If you don't meet all of this in month one, you let it go over into month two. But so far in month two, I'm planning to start a regular quiet time every morning. I want to start exercising three times a week. And I want to open up an investor account so I can participate in the cattle feedlot. And in month three, and I haven't put anything there, but you get an idea of what needs to be done. And folks, that's really the annual self-assessment that must result in a 12-month action plan. But it's done for your own good. If you don't focus on it, in coming back to that time management thing of important but not urgent. So these one, this is one of the things that, because it's not urgent, you tend to let it slide and one year becomes another year. And a year later, you haven't even moved on your journey from struggle to significance. But if you can important and urgent, and you do this by putting it in a 12 month action plan on, and the ASA was just all the prompts to give to, to identify for you what needs to be focused on in the next 12 months. And by putting it in an action plan, it now becomes urgent and hopefully you will now start doing it. And then from gig and the gig management side, you know, nobody has the time to police people, but we are building it into our pro program going forward. And the rewards for you in the, by doing the ASA program and submitting your 12-month uh, action plan is that will become a key component to be considered for an interest-free loan. So when you apply for an interest-free loan, doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank, you can always get an interest-free loan of one-to-one of -one with what you have in the bank. But if you want to borrow up to two and with this ASA program, the board is considering taking it back to three times. Then you must have an updated 12 month action plan. So the first thing the credit committee will ask after they get all your 
quotes back and all your documentation, supporting documentation for the loan. They will want to see the updated 12 month action plan because a person who hasn't updated his 12 month action plan, our thinking is such a person is also not serious about financial literacy. And therefore we not keen to give such a person more than a one-to-one -one loan. So very important, it be, will become a, a key condition. You will also st will start to have a steady and even accelerated progress of your family's generational journey. And you'll be surprised how quickly this thing gains momentum and makes you feel very good about what you're doing. And in the process, you will have an improved quality of life. So to close off, there's a verse that I like uh, in Micah 6 verse 8 that says, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly and to love kindness and mercy and to humble yourself and walk humbly with your God. So in closing, the key character traits of a generational lifestyle can therefore be summarized as Find and live your purpose. And that's what we try to help you with this annual self-assessment. Stay humble. You know, uh, uh, progressing on your journey doesn't give you the right now to become arrogant. But enjoy your life and allow yourself the good things in life. And, but don't try and compete with the neighbors or the Joneses. And live the moment. This is a journey. It's not a destination. And you find the meaning of your life in what your life means to others. And then think generational in everything that you do.